Hi, today I will show you a super easy way to connect a display to your ESP32. No, not the small TFTs which need a ton of wires. How about composite video? We need just two wires and no extra components. You simply connect ground and pin 25 like this and use my Arduino sketch from the project page. If your TV set doesn't have composite, there might be a SCART socket where you can use a cheap adapter like this. But even those are really retro and will die out soon. Ok, now the drawbacks. It's only a grayscale image, but it's really fast. 50 frames per second on PAL and 60 on NTSC. Ok, it's interlaced, so 50 or 60 half frames per second. You might ask, how is that possible? Composite video isn't stated anywhere in the feature set of the ESP32. But there is something much more powerful. If you are following my channel, we already have been introduced into the built-in I2S and digital to analog converters. I2S is a protocol designed to transfer sound without any overhead. Nowadays it's used to transfer all kinds of data streams. As already shown in the last video, I was able to tweak it to transfer over 13 mega samples to one of the internal digital to analog converters. These are capable of converting 8-bit digital values to actual analog voltages. And composite video is nothing else than an analog voltage signal. All that might sound complicated, but is done quite easily with few lines of code. Now comes the question. If you are just sending data, how does this old analog TV know how to display it? This is done with some sync signals. Wikipedia has some basic information on this. But I found this page with much more details, which is also linked below. It provides some tables with the precise timings and voltages and also detailed PDFs with the signals. Here is a simplified explanation. The image is sent from top to bottom line by line. In the past there was a cathode ray that needed some time to retrace horizontally and vertically. So actually not all the signal is visible in the frame. The blind spots are used for synchronization of the image and each line. The signal time for a complete line including the synchronization is around 64 microseconds. Let's take a look how the signal of a line looks like. The signal voltage is defined between 0 and 1 volt. The line starts with the sync phase which is 0 volts and continues with the blank phase. Then comes the actual image data of the current line, followed by a short blank phase. We can easily generate this kind of analog signal. Our 8-bit duck can output 256 voltage levels between 0 and 3.3 volts. Since the video signal only goes up to 1 volt, we have to use the duck values from 0 to around 77. The sync level is at 0 volts, so we use the duck value 0. The blank level is around 0.3 volts, which is the duck value of around 23. This leaves around 54 distinct displayable grey values. With a simple voltage divider you could even use the complete duck range. But this is the simplest version and it's really looking good already. What about the timing and how many samples fit into 64 microseconds? The duck can deliver 13.33 mega samples a second, which are around 853 samples a line. Since I2S needs an even number, we make it 854. It's quite a coincidence, but this results in a bit above 640 visible pixels per line. I simply make it 640. To use color we would need an additional burst signal and on top of the grey values a color signal with a frequency that we can simply not achieve using the duck. If you want to know more about Chroma, check out the videos of Charles Lohr. He already did remarkable stuff with the ESPs. The horizontal sync is quite simple, but unfortunately the vertical is not. The image consists of 625 lines on PAL and 525 lines on NTSC, which are displayed interlaced. That means that the even numbered lines are displayed first and then the odd numbered ones second. These half frames have to be synced separately and the odd number of total lines makes it even more confusing since the sync signal is shifted by half a line. But let's take it step by step. A vertical sync pulse takes half a line. It's either short or long. The first line is predecessed by 5 short syncs. Then from the first line there are 5 long syncs followed by 5 short ones. This was the even half frame. For the odd half frame the sync pulses are shifted by half a line, but that's all covered in my code. Just take it and use it for your stuff. But if you want all the details take a look at the page I linked below. Depending on PAL and NTSC you can display more or fewer lines. 
Since the image has to be buffered in the memory of the ESP and there are only around 200 kilobytes free on startup, I decided to use a QVGA buffer and scale it up by 2. Isn't that gorgeous? You might also ask, how is it possible to feed all the data and also render a 3D mesh at the same time? That's also quite simple. The ESP32 has two high power cores. I simply let the composite video stuff run on the first core, while the graphics are rendered on the second one. I've prepared an image converter and some examples how to write text, draw pixels, lines and meshes on the project page, so check it out. Next time we will interface an old school gamepad and then we can start to develop a super simple game console. I hope this was informative and if you liked it share it and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.